Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Richard Widmark in Sir Arthur Pinero's The Enchanted Cottage on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's outstanding stars in great stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a well-known play by one of the world's best-known playwrights, an Englishman, the late Sir Arthur Pinero. The play of his we have chosen for tonight, The Enchanted Cottage, is one of his later works and has proved deservedly popular since its production just after the First World War. It is a warm-hearted story with a prevailing note both old and true and full of hope. Its portrayal of love as an inner miracle gives it a great tenderness and perhaps no story has ever more hopefully demonstrated that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And since its theme is universal, we have told it as if it were happening in America today. We are fortunate tonight in having secured for the starring role that fine actor, Richard Widmark. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? Hallmark cards have a magic carpet quality about them. They take you visiting, however great the distance, to help celebrate a birthday and anniversary. Bring good wishes on special days or just any day when you are thinking of someone. There is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste. And you'll send them with pride, for that identifying hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Sir Arthur Pinero's The Enchanted Cottage, starring Richard Widmark. in California, a very romantic Spanish don built a cottage in a beautiful and secluded glen and reserved it exclusively for honeymooners. Through the years, this custom was observed and no one but newly married couples ever went there. In 1949, this tradition was broken. Oliver Brown, a battle-scarred war veteran, rented the cottage for himself. Mrs. Minnett, where are you? You wanted to talk to me, Mr. Brown? Yes. Who's playing that piano downstairs? A Major Hillgrove. He's waiting to see you. I don't know any Major Hillgrove. I don't want to know him. Tell him to get out. Well, he's already here. I'll do my own thinking, Mrs. Minnett. I don't want to see any company. Most of all, I don't want any company to see me. If you're worried about his seeing you, you needn't. Major Hillgrove is blind. Blind? Hmm. Did he tell you what he wanted? No, sir. All right, I'll talk to him. When I'm through, he'll never come back again. Well? Oh. Oh, I hope you don't mind my playing your piano. You're Mr. Brown, aren't you? That's right. I'm Hillgrove. I'm vacationing here this summer, and I thought, since you and I are practically neighbors, I'd drop in, say hello. That's very decent of you, but it isn't exactly what I there had There isn't in... a house or telephone within five miles of here. I thought you must get lonely at times. Major, I've taken this cottage for the purpose of being alone. Sick man. <laughs> what do I sound like to you? Was it the war? Forget it, will you? I got mine in France. You've got my sympathy. What else is there to say? Which outfit were you with? What difference does it make? I got mine in the neck, part of my face. But it's my head, my head that's killing me. You'll be all right. Don't give me that line. I've heard that routine for the past three years. Well, <clears throat> I guess I'll be going. If, uh, if you'll help me to the door... Major, I, uh... I, I'm sorry I was rude. Guess I shouldn't have been beefing out loud. Why not? If it helps you. You don't beef, do you? <laughs> you haven't given me a chance. Major, will you shake hands with me and forgive my bad manners? I, uh, think I like you. Thanks. I won't take any more of your time. 
Mrs. Minnett told me that you were expecting company. Yes, my mother. She was here last month. I wish you weren't coming. Uh, I look forward to my family visiting me. Perhaps you're feeling just a little too sorry for yourself. No, no, no. You don't understand. My mother doesn't have enough imagination to realize that my chief object in life is to avoid those who've known me as I was. Malarkey. Yes, as I was. Healthy, strong, active. Malarkey or not, no words can describe the contempt I have for my shriveled face and shrunken body. I can't look myself in the mirror. It's agony to me. There are days, and this is one of them, when I can't bear it. Life must go on. There are other days. Oh, yes. I've dared to go into town, eat a meal in a restaurant. I've even dared to look into people's faces. One of these days, I might even dare to go to San Francisco and watch a ball game. I used to enjoy playing football. I know how you feel. I used to play football at State. Oh, then... Then you're the Hill Grove. Yes. Well, you were one of the greatest players in the country. You were signed with one of the big pro teams. You had a future. Oh, I wasn't nearly that good. Major, I'm... I'm very sorry. Don't be. I'm not. Now, would you take me to the door? Miss Pennington's waiting outside for me. Miss Pennington? Is that Laura Pennington who comes here to help Mrs. Minnett once in a while? Yes. My driver's sick with flu, and Miss Pennington was kind enough to drive me here. She's a nice, gentle little thing. Yes, she is. She's a very plain girl, isn't she? Well, how could you know? Instinct. Yes, you're right. She's anything but beautiful. Oh, uh, Brown, I I hope you lose your headache very quickly. Oh, you have a headache, Mr. Brown? Yes. Don't you have a headache, Carter? It won't help, Miss Pennington. Yes, it will. I'll get you some from town after I take Major Hillgrove home. Please don't bother. It's no trouble. Really, it isn't. Thank you. And, uh, Major... Mm-hmm? I'll, uh, look forward to seeing you soon. You know, that's funny. I never thought I'd be saying that to anyone again. Dear boy, how are you? I uh, thought maybe with the rain you wouldn't come. I know my duty as a mother. Oh, Oliver, what am I to say to people? It simply embarrasses me to tears the way you've hidden yourself away like a hermit. After all, you should think of your poor mother. <laughs> you're really concerned about me. Of course, darling. And your housekeeper, that... That Mrs. Minnie, why... She positively gives me the creep. Oh, now, really, Mother. Darling, I solved the whole problem. Why didn't I think of it before? Think of what? Your sister, of course. She'd be willing to come up here and take care of you. Mother, did it ever enter your mind that I'd be a lot happier working out my own problems? Oliver, I won't have it. I simply won't have it. The doctor warned me you behave oddly, and I made up my mind that the way to cure you is not to sympathize with you. Oh, what's the use? All that. I'll bring your sister back with me when I come to visit you again. <laughs> Huh? I brought the headache, Carter. Oh, you really meant what you said about curing my headache. Thank you, Miss Pennington. Take two now, and about four hours, take two more. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Well, I'll be saying goodbye, Miss Pennington. I'm leaving here tonight. Where are you going? I don't know, and I don't care. May I ask why? Because people won't let me alone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll leave. No, 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 it's not you. It's, it's my family. I want them to leave me alone. I want to work out my own problems. I hope you won't be angry with me for offering advice. That you won't think I'm presuming on our slight acquaintance. No, go ahead. Well, whether you remain in this cottage or go elsewhere, it isn't good for you to live alone. You need companionship. Someone to talk to. Someone to exchange ideas with you. You know, often during the bad weather we've had, I've pictured you here sitting alone. And I... Well, I know what it is to be alone. 
No, I understand. You thought of me? Worried about me? I think I'd better be going. Please don't go. Well, I, I have to get home Miss before Pennington, dark. Miss Pennington, don't be startled at what I'm going to propose to you. Imagine you're thinking about me, worrying about me. Oh, you wouldn't get on a man's nerves. You're the sort of girl a man could stand. Look, look, I'm desperately unhappy. Would you give up your apartment and move in here with me? We'd be married first, of course. I don't understand. Please, don't be frightened. I'd be good to you. You wouldn't even know I was around. I have an income enough to take care of us. But you know so little of me. I know what I'm doing. But if you want to marry, there must be dozens of smart, pretty girls of Pretty girls. Heart. It's the pretty girls I haven't the courage to face. Look at me. A hideous casualty for the rest of my life. I understand. You've asked me to marry you because I possess a special qualification of being ugly. Oh, no. No, no, I, I, I didn't mean that. It doesn't matter. Goodbye. Please, please forgive me, oh, Miss Pennington. I, I'm terribly sorry you? I didn't mean to offend you, but can't you understand that no woman would marry me except out of pity? I know there'd be no romance in our marriage, but we could be great friends, you and I. I'm very sorry I've hurt you. I believe you. I'm aware of my ugliness, but it's a shock to be told of it so bluntly. But of course, I see through your excuse. Oh, Lord. Lord. Mr. Brown, if ever again you approach an ugly woman in this way, bear in mind that even ugly women, conscious as they may be of their defects, have their dreams. Their dreams. Dreams? Day dreams as well as night dreams. Golden dreams. Merciful dreams. Merciful dreams? Dreams of forgetfulness, of oblivion. Dreams in which they're as lovely and as desirable as the loveliest and the most desirable of women. Remember that. And that to spare them too complete an awakening is an act of charity. Laura, I can't begin to say how really sorry I am for my stupidity. I beg of you, Laura, forgive me. Please. Please. I'm no longer hurt. Laura. Really, I'm not. You're wonderful. How lucky a man would be if you'd marry him. Please, Laura, please. And this time, there are no strings. No excuses. Will you marry me? Yes, Oliver, yes. I'll marry you. <laughs> In a moment, James Hilton will return to present Act Two of Sir Arthur Pinero's The Enchanted Cottage, starring Richard Widmark. Tonight, I'd like to tell you a true story about a man who was in the hospital recently. He received many huge and beautiful bouquets of fresh flowers, and he thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if people could send flowers that never fade, flowers that would stay bright and beautiful forever? Tonight, that thought has become a reality. Now you can send a new kind of greeting card. Cut out baskets of flowers, hallmark bouquets. Their gorgeous colors will stay as fresh as your memories, as bright as your friendship. Hallmark bouquets are nine inches high, equally beautiful, front and back, and they stand up by themselves. There's a card carrying your greeting tied at the top of the basket with a crisp bow of white taffeta ribbon. When you open the bouquet, there's your friendly message to be kept and remembered. You will find hallmark bouquets of pink and lavender sweet peas, snowy gardenias, crimson roses, all of such fresh colors and gay originality. It's a joy to choose one. They look so expensive, but cost only 50 cents each. Stop in tomorrow at the friendly store where you buy your hallmark cards and ask to see the new hallmark bouquets. Now, James Hilton and Act Two of Sir Arthur Pinero's The Enchanted Cottage, starring Richard Widmark. <laughs> So 
Several weeks later, Laura and Oliver were married in a small church and returned to their honeymoon cottage. Major Hillgrove, who had been out of town at the time of the wedding, returned to find an urgent message from Oliver to hurry over to the cottage. Good evening, Major Hillgrove. Hello, Mrs. Minnett. Are Laura and Oliver at home? This way, Major. Thank you. You'll be the first person they've seen, sir, since their marriage, except me. I'm flattered that I'm the first. You know, sir, since their marriage, they don't go out until nighttime. And even then, they wrap themselves up and cover their faces for fear they should meet anybody. Sounds mighty mysterious. I can hardly wait to talk to them. <laughs> Hello, Major. Are we glad to see you. Hello, you two. I got your letter. Now, what's this all about? Oh, Major, if you could only see it. Major, I, uh, I don't know how to go about telling you this, except the... Uh, it, it, it's fantastic, unbelievable, and yet... It's true. You understood from Oliver's letter, didn't you, that something remarkable had happened to us? Well, it wasn't very coherent. Supposing, Oliver, you start at the beginning. It all began three weeks ago yesterday, right after we were married. It was storming out as Laura and I reached the pathway leading to the cottage. Here, Laura. Let me put my coat around you. You'll get soaked. Oh, no, I'm all right. Let's make a run for it. All right. Well, we certainly picked a horrible day to get married, didn't we? Yes. Isn't very pleasant. Yeah. The key to the door is under the mat. I'll get it. No, no, I'll get it. Wait a minute. I believe it's traditional to carry the bride across the threshold. Up you go. Oh, it's really not necessary, Oliver. But I want to. Welcome home, Laura. Thank you, Oliver. Do you realize that we're married and I've never even kissed you? Yes. Well... Over this room. I've never seen it look so lovely. It's so gay and bright as if there were no storm outside and the sun was streaming through the windows. Yes, I've never seen it as cheerful and inviting as it is now. Laura. Laura, look at me. Yes? on your face. Oh, they're gone. They've disappeared. It's like a dream. It's almost as if you and I and this cottage were... We're enchanted. It was then, Major, that we both realized that something remarkable and unexplainable had happened to us. We, we decided to keep the secret to ourselves, but as the weeks went by and Laura became more and more beautiful, we felt we had to share our secret with somebody we both cared for. That's why I wrote to you, Major, asking you to come here. Amazing. And what's more, it's incredible that our marriage should turn out to be what it is when you stop to think that we only married each other out of, well, mutual consolation. We have so much now, but is it just a dream? Has it really happened? Is it really happening? We're afraid to let people see us for fear that it isn't true. We want you to reassure us. Tell us what you feel. Please. Laura. Oliver, take this gift and enjoy it without question. Accept it humbly as a heaven-sent miracle. It is a miracle. A wonderful, wonderful miracle. It is. Of course it is. Major, I'd uh, like to ask a favor, please. I've written my mother a letter about our marriage, and I'm afraid I wasn't exactly complimentary in describing Laura. She'll be here tomorrow. Would you tell her what's happened to us? Of course I would. Your son has asked me to talk to you. My name is Hillgrove. How do you do? 
Where is Oliver? Uh, your son and his wife will be along presently. They're, they're dressing. Well, then please tell them I'm here. Uh, Mrs. Brown, Oliver and Laura asked me to prepare you for a surprise. Good heavens, what is it? Mrs. Brown, when your son wrote you and, and described his wife, he wrote truthfully. She was a very plain girl. Was? Picture this, if you will. Your son and his wife entering that door. He, a shattered, unsightly man. And she, a very plain little girl, whose very attraction was her gentle, appealing manner. Really, Almost I... as soon as they entered this cottage as man and wife, the change, though gradual, began to happen. Change? I don't know if you believe in miracles. Modern miracles. Miracles that may happen to you. To me. The day, tomorrow, that, that may relieve misfortunes, that may heal the sick, make the lame walk and the blind... The blind see. Your son is no longer what you think he is. When you see him again, you'll see him as he was, as he used to be, without his scars. And his wife? My daughter-in-law? A beautiful young woman. With music in every sound she breathes. And my ears teach me grace in every movement. This is incredible. Mother? Mother, we're coming right now. Mrs. Brown, there are so many things I'd like to say to you. However, I'll leave you alone now. Good day. Well, here we are, Mother. Oliver. Oliver. Hello, Mother. I'm glad you came. This is my wife, Laura. It's, it's so kind of you to come and see us. May I pour you some tea, Mrs. Brown? Thank you, my dear. Oliver. Oh, my darling Oliver. It's wonderful, isn't it, Mother? Major Hillgrove told you how it all happened, didn't he? It must seem unbelievable to you. Oliver, my son. Have you... Don't you think you ought to consult a doctor? <laughs> a doctor? Well, I'm cured, Mother. I'm a different man. The miracle that's happened to Laura and me has changed everything. You ought to be very happy, Mother. Huh? Yes, of course. There's no need for me to hide anymore. Oh, my poor, poor, sweet Oliver. What do you mean, Mother? Nothing, darling. Really nothing. I, I've got to leave. I'm, I'm in a terrible rush. You see, I just dropped in for a moment and, well... Oh, Oliver... Mother, you've never seen Laura before, so you can't judge the difference. But what about me? Oliver, please. Mother, look at me. Tell me. Can't you see any change? Oliver, Laura, goodbye, my dears. Every happiness to you both. I, I'll write soon, darling. Mother. Mother. Please, darling. Mrs. Minnett. Mrs. Minnett, come in here. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Brown. Mrs. Minnett, answer me. You've known my wife as Miss Pennington for a long time. Yes, sir. And myself for some months. Yes, sir. Before our marriage, you were thoroughly familiar with our appearance. Yes, sir. Have we changed? Do you see anything different about us? No. No, sir. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I do, sir. What do you mean? <laughs> I've watched you both from the start. And I've seen your love grow. And a man and woman in love have a sight that's not granted to other people. Oh, Mr. Brown, keep this love. And you'll never be anything to one another but beautiful. Yes. Yes. Oliver. If there's a child, is there a chance it will be beautiful? Chance? It's a certainty. If it's a girl, she'll be the loveliest there ever was. And if it's a boy, the strongest that ever breathed. Because of you. Oh, Oliver, dearest. I'm so happy. We thought this cottage was enchanted. But there is no enchantment here except what we feel for each other. I love you, Laura. I will forever.
George Hilton and Richard Widmark will return in a moment. Here's a new way to bring the joy of flowers into the lives of others. It's a Hallmark bouquet, a sparkling new kind of greeting card. Picture a friend who has been ill receiving a large cut-out basket overflowing with crimson red roses, fresh in color and glorious beauty. The basket is as beautiful in back as in front. Tied to the handle with a crisp bow of white taffeta ribbon is your greeting. A basket of roses to help you get well. And this message is inside. A bouquet of roses especially to say, here's hoping you're feeling lots better today. And hope every day finds you better. For then, it won't be too long till you're all well again. Could you imagine a more cheerful way to remember a friend who is ill or convalescing? And there are hallmark bouquets of other beautiful flowers suitable for any occasion. All of them only 50 cents each. So stop in tomorrow at the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards and ask to see Hallmark bouquets. Remember, Hallmark bouquets, like your friendship, will stay always as bright as they are today. Here again is James Hilton. It's been a rare privilege to hear a story of the human heart as told by a great playwright and so wonderfully performed by one of Hollywood's newest and distinguished actors, Richard Widmark. I'd like to add my personal thanks to that of all our Hallmark family for the grand performance this evening, Mr. Whitmark. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. And thanks also to Lorreen Tuttle, who played Laura, and Gerald Moore, who played Hillgrove, and all the rest of the fine cast. You know, I really enjoyed myself this evening. Playing a part like Oliver always leaves me feeling refreshed and hopeful. Oh, uh, incidentally, didn't Frank Goss say something about some Hallmark bouquets? I think they're a grand idea. You know, we have a birthday in our family today. Do you have a bouquet for that occasion? We certainly do, Mr. Whitmark. I'll give it to you right after the show. Fine, it'll be a little extra surprise. Thank you and good night, Mr. Hilton. Good night, and we hope you'll come again. And we hope you'll be listening to us next week when we present Kenyon Nicholson's famous play, The Barker, starring Charles Bickford. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards, when you care enough, do send the very best. Richard Whitmark appeared to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The Beautiful Blonde from Bashful Ben, starring Betty Grable. And our play tonight, The Enchanted Cottage, was presented to the courtesy of RKO, producers of The Window. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to the adventures of Casey, crime photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcast. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.